What's the worst place you ever had to spend a night? Jail. Came to say the same. Although a close second is a bus terminal park bench after being turned away at the Canadian border. The Astrodome during Hurricane Rita. I got to take a shti in a trash can with an audience of dozens and that was one of the nicer parts of that week. Was around 14, drinking at the local park with my friends. They thought it funny to mix some benzos into my vodka, didn't know what that was then. So I didn't protest. Afternoon turned to night. I felt delirious. Soon realized I was absolutely alone. Aside from some druggies and hobos. The usual drunkard's GPS failed to lead me back home. It began to rain. And crawling underneath a bush I found what presumably was a foxhole. I was cold and rolled myself up into a ball at its entrance. Even though my mind was wiped. I couldn't sleep. My thoughts didn't make sense and were full of anxiety. One of the longest nights of my life. When I eventually emerged on all fours from the mouth of the dirt hole in the morning. A spider fell out of my hair. Crickets jumped around on my back. And I saw claw marks all over my calves and forearms. Maybe I had slept after all. A mental hospital. Especially when they have to come in every 10 minutes and shine a light into your eyes to make sure you're alive. Or when there are people screaming down the hall all night. Spent 2 months in one in 2018. I don't know how they expect you to get better when they keep you from getting good sleep. Good food. Fresh air. Or any social connections whatsoever. I was there a week and felt like I was in a psychological thriller. The more angry and upset I got. The less likely I knew they'd be to let me out. It was like little torture. The beds were like rock and honestly it made me so much worse. I didn't trust mental health professionals for months after. I was there a week and I cried my eyes out once I got out because I felt like I escaped an actual horror film. I wasn't mistreated. It was just a horrible environment. In a tree. Had a rafting accident and the three of us ended up spending 18 hours, overnight, hanging onto tree branches in the middle of an overflowing river until we were rescued the next morning by the swift water rescue team. We took turns sleeping as the other two grabbed on so we would not fall in. Picture us in no shoes. Shorts and t-shirts as the temp dropped down below 50 degrees that night. Made the front page of the local newspaper. Our 15 minutes of fame I guess. A friend's place. We weren't that close. It was high school and she just got back from hospital for mental problems. She was in and out the whole time I knew her. But she was happy to be out but also very lonely so I slept over. She lived in an apartment with her parents but the place was a wreck. Trash everywhere. Dirty dishes. But the worst of it was they didn't potty train their little dog so it would pee all over the kitchen and they would just put a paper towel over it. The kitchen was covered in paper towels no no. I tried to not go in the kitchen but I knew the urine was tracked everywhere. What really got me was when the dog stepped in her bowl of hamburger helper and she laughed and kept eating it anyway. Covid IQ. The hospital staff was excellent. But all in all. I'd have rather avoided it. Excellent care. But almost died. 2 stroke 10 experience. Double quote. But for real. Glad you made it out. Trying to sleep on the floor of a moving bus with no pillows. I've done this many times. And it never gets any better. I've ridden a fair amount of Greyhound buses but the worst was 72 hours each direction, New Mexico to Maine and back, to visit a friend. I need to lay flat to sleep so the best I could get was sort of hunching over and catching brief naps lasting a few minutes each here and there. Hoping I could actually get some proper sleep that never came. The best I managed to do was getting on the next bus early and hogging the back seat so I could sort of lay down. Managed to get a couple hours that way. But I was a complete zombie by the end. A tent on top of a bald mountain top in the fall. During a torrential downpour. I had to sleep in about 4 inches of freezing water. Yeah. That's awful. I had a pretty similar experience camping in the Gemma's mountains in the fall. Above 10. 000 feet. Got a couple inches of water in my tent at one point. Mopped it as best as I could with dirty clothes and such. 
but I still got pretty soaked and froze my ass off. My feet were slightly blue when I woke up. So I spent the morning close to the fire and it took half the damn day to get rid of the chill. In 2007. After a 12 hour van ride that should have taken 3 delays due to bus riots. I crossed the Nepali Indian border into Baha. One of the poorest states. At 3 am. We were immediately robbed. And. Without any cash except for a $10 bill my buddy had in his shoe. The only place that would take our money was completely destitute. Upon opening the door. We were greeted by dozens of rats that had absolutely no fear of humans. They were on top of the broken TV. Climbing the drapes. Etc. We went to bed that night. Defeated. Knowing we'd be covered in rats. Used to live with a guy up in Hayden, Alabama. Mid July and the year C goes out. It was supposed to rain all week with about 80% humidity coupled with 95 plus temperature outside. The house turned into a swamp. We opened all the windows and doors. Turned on every fan we could find and still it was just awful. The bedroom was so hot we couldn't use it so we slept on the couches which were so soaked by the end of the day that you could press your hand into it and your hand would come up wet. I slept in a hotel bathroom with wet toilet paper in my ears once when I was a stupid kid. I was sharing a room with my dad and my brother. Both of them were terrible snorers, my dad at least has a CPAP now and my brother's estranged. So two problems solved. I couldn't sleep. Couldn't handle the snoring. So I went in the bathroom. Wadded up some toilet paper. Wet it. Jammed it in my ears. And tried my best to get some sleep. Wouldn't recommend. Did some long term damage to one ear them from a bit of toilet paper that was stuck on there for years afterward. Cabin at a camp in central Alaska. Got insanely cold and my sleeping bag wasn't cutting it. Tried to put like a foam sleeping pad on top of me not knowing that the sleeping bag let all my sweat out and it covered the foam pad completely soaking me. Which then pretty much froze. Absolute torture. For future reference. It's more effective to put things underneath you than on top of you. Foam pad under you. Never over. Layers under instead of on top and you'll find you're much warmer. Source. Frequent camper who was insane enough to camp in snow. I.A. An apartment in Midtown. Manhattan. I should have figured that the prices they were offering were incredibly low for a place one minute away from Bryant Park. But I still booked it anyway for four nights. It smelled terribly. It didn't feel safe. The whole building felt like it was still being built. Only one of the elevators was actually, barely, functioning. The bathroom door didn't fully open because the sink was on the way and my GF at the time didn't believe it. But I'm pretty sure that even the floor was a bit crooked. A couple of weeks after returning home I searched for the place on booking and it was gone. Upon further research I found out that it was actually closed because if infringe a bunch of safety rules in New York City. The worst was getting locked inside the organ blower room. I was resting on the sexton sofa in that room late in the afternoon. Having a nap before choir rehearsals later in the day day. The sexton unwittingly locked me in the room, a deadbolt on the door, before he went home for the day. So there I was, just the organ blower and me. The balcony at my best friend's party one night. Got drunk and decided to black out at the wooden bench while it was raining. Got sick the next day. I've slept outside. On the beach. In the airport. In extremely uncomfortable tiny Asian bus seats. But the worst was in an open air homestay in remote Vietnam. Like a little wood room. But that walls don't go all the way up and there are holes in the walls too. That in itself was totally fine. You get used to the hard beds after a while. And it's better than a cheap hostel dorm. The problem was the group of old men staying up the whole night drinking and chain smoking directly outside my door completely filling my room with heavy smoke the entire night. I'm good in a smoky bar for a few hours. But sleeping in one is a nightmare. Chicago O'Hare International Airport. Or maybe in my truck on Wolf Creek Pass in Colorado. Both were interesting experiences. Fuck O'Hare. I had to spend the night in the terminal because my initial flight was delayed. 
causing me to miss my connecting flight. And United's customer service took 3 hours to handle a 30 deep line and by the time I got to the window all they gave me were a couple of worthless food vouchers because it was so late. I just have to leave the hotel as soon as I got in. Last time I had to fly to Chicago. I specifically chose Southwest because I changed flights at Midway instead of O'Hare. The only thing worse than O'Hare Airport is having to deal with United Airlines customer service at O'Hare Airport. Even slower and lazier than the F-King DMV. On the sidewalk. I was a little drunk and couldn't find my way home. I took so much acid and mushrooms at a fish festival and forgot where my tent was. Spent the night shivering in the rain until someone I knew found me. Went camping in the woods once in Emmy and all those little no see um bugs went right through my tent walls. It was so unbearable that I packed the tent up at 4am and hiked 2 hours into the dark. It was not as bad for me. But when I had to stay in the neurological department of the hospital. My roommate was there because of a big rain attack that didn't end. The reason why this is very unfortunate is because most others there. Including myself. Had some sort of spastic seizure disorder. Brain damage or dementia. So she was surrounded by people that were screaming. Knocking over things. Falling out of their beds and running in the hallway. I think the man next to us had some sort of dementia and he tried to escape the hospital all the time. Ran into our room a few times whilst screaming. It was an experience. Cheapest Airbnb in Tokyo. Was disgusting. Moved to the Four Seasons after a few days to spend time cleaning in the day spa for a few days. Slept drunk on a small mat in the spa of a cheap capsule hotel there. I was told that it was full and that reservations don't matter. But I could pay less to go to the spa. It was after 12 and I was drunk so I went to the spa and found a large room completely filled with Japanese men still wearing their suits all sleeping on mats inches from each other. Grabbed a mat by the door and found a little spot in between a bunch of guys. At least I wasn't outside in the cold. Behavioral ward the night after I attempted suicide. Pills and booze. Would have succeeded if not for a friendly police officer who broke department protocol. I went on a Galapagos cruise in a small boat that had 8 passengers. You would think this was the best way to go. However. There were cockroaches in the beds and the ship got tossed around like a rubber ducky in the waves. So bad that some of the passengers put their life jackets on. It wasn't good. The Galapagos Islands were awesome though. A homeless shelter in San Francisco that made you sit in an uncomfortable metal chair at a table to sleep if you didn't have a bed. I would have rather slept on the floor or even outdoors than do that again. By morning my back was so sore I could hardly move. I have slept rough in a lot of places over my life. Even been homeless for a brief period in my early 20s. But I'd say my answer is any given night in the house I grew up in. Double quote. Yeah. Have also been homeless. And I would sometimes sleep in the woods behind the house when I was a kid so my dad wouldn't find me when he came home at night. I can't even say it was that bad. Because being in the house was worse. A hoarder's house when I was 10. The amount of dead. Small animals I saw and smelled was crazy. We thankfully stayed at a motel the next night. That was the beginning of me becoming a germaphobe. I had a boat charter to drop me off on a small island and was scheduled to pick us up the next day. As it turns out, we weren't able to get off the beach onto the actual island because of a razor sharp barnacle wall surrounding the whole area. So we were trapped on a sandbar until the next morning. So unfortunately, as night fell, the tide started rising. And only a tiny sliver of the sandbar stayed above sea level. The ground was soaking wet and sopped through the tent we were sleeping in. But to add insult to injury, Turns out the sandbar was also a huge horse show crab mating ground. So the entire island was swarmed by HRNY horse show crabs. So the rest of the night we basically were wet. Cold. And being swarmed by horse show crabs fking against our tent. Truly one of my worst nights. The ER on a Friday night after a failed suicide attempt in 2017. If you think ERs are bad as it is. Wait until it's a Friday night full of drunks and drugged out people mixed with old dying people. 
it's a wild sight and sound. My family of six and our Belgian Malinois slept in a Kia Sorento because my in-laws kicked us out. We just moved to Texas from Ohio and it was miserable. Some crummy motel in Montana. We had started a road trip and I couple tell I was the only person of color to come through that place for years probably. The maintenance guy followed me into my room and gave me some story about checking to see if the cable was working. Other staff and guests were sizing me up. I triple locked my door and the window. And I slept with my pocket knife under my pillow that night. Our own house after a hurricane knocked out the power to the whole area for 5 days in the middle of a Florida summer and there was no AC. Not even a fan to move the hot dense air around. It was impossible to get any sleep since it was so humid and miserable. For those of you not familiar. Air conditioning in Florida is not a luxury. It's a vital requirement to live just as much as food. Water. And oxygen to breathe. A hostel in Pattaya with a group of old SX tourist men. I'm a woman in my mid-twenties. One of whom was half naked when I entered the room. We had a bit of your usual traveler small talk and after I told him I'm German he told me Heil Hitler, still in his underpants. Only time in my life I've changed from a mixed dorm to a women's. I'd been told stories about how gross Pattaya is but I was not ready for how much so. Got pretty shit faced my buddy brought girls home from the bar so I dipped BC I had a GF. I ubered home to my apt at 4am found out I didn't have my keys of course. I was new in town and no one picked up the phone so I somehow found a cardboard box next to the jank laundry room in the basement of my complex and used a tide bottle as a pillow. It was actually surprising comfy BC it was warm down there. I slept for a couple hours until my buddy woke up early thank god and picked me up. I cursed I'd never drink again but we know how that goes. A tent in rural Cambodia. Next to a river. The site had lamps set up by the tents. One of which was almost directly above mine. I could see thousands of mosquitoes attracted to the light through the mesh area at the top of my tent. And hundreds crawling on the outside of the tent itself. I went around my tent multiple times ensuring every single zip was shut as tight as possible. Wiping as much of the inside surface as I possibly could with repellent wipes. And still. Somehow. Mosquitoes kept managing to find their way in, one every few minutes. I had already had two almost sleepless nights at this point. So if it wasn't for complete physical exhaustion there's no way I would have managed to get the 20 minutes of sleep I eventually managed just before 05. 00 in the morning. Went to Imca camp when I was 12 at Catalina Island. In the middle of the first night. Feral hogs came trampling through and destroyed the tent I was in and I got stomped on. At least tusks didn't get me. My tent got rained out on a trip so I had to ask someone I didn't know if I could bunk with them. On top of the awkwardness. I didn't have a sleeping bag because it was soaked. Not a very fun time. Stuck on Maroon Pass in Colorado. Near the top of the pass in a one man tent with no rain fly in the snow with two other guys nut butt all night trying not to freeze to death because our party we were to meet couldn't make it over the pass because they got stuck in the snow outside of Crested Butte. Or last weekend sleeping in the dirt with no shelter freezing my ass off deep into teapot dome. Next to my drunk ass hunting partner snoring his ass off so loud it sounded like bears in the camp. Or the Denver drunk tank visited my grandma during the festival and all rooms were taken. We couldn't even merge two sofa chairs and use as a bed, was a kid back then, so me and my brother had to go to my grandma's cousin who's a hoarder. She had a folding bed in this room she probably didn't open in 5 years. So much dust everywhere. She opened the window for me and my brother and put clean sheets. I didn't sleep a wink all night as mice kept running over my feet and right in front of my face on the edge of the bed. It was the worst thing ever. Fourth floor of Capsule Hotel the night a magnitude 5 earthquake hit Tokyo area. Nothing collapsed or anything. But I'm from Australia. So it was very weird. And it made me extremely nervous. I was probably 16. In one of those cheap hotels known for a place of quick sex. We attended funeral and there was no other choices of accommodation than this one. 
The worst part is that I went with my mother. Her same age male friend and his daughter. We occupy different rooms. This dude's daughter stayed in our room because we were close and come midnight and my mom kept sneaking out of her room. We always felt like they were sort of cheating from their spouses with each other but that night was just straight up in our face and I felt so. So sorry for my dad. Didn't sleep that night. That place felt so dirty. Me and a large group of friends were camping out for the Indy 500 a couple years ago. We were the first of two cars in our group to arrive on the night the temporary campground was open. Tents were set up. Fire was lit. Many beers were drank after our long journey to get there. A local friend we have also came to hang out with us, close enough that he walked. Cut to about 3 in the morning. An absolutely torrential downpour and violent thunderstorm breaks out. Blows our tents right over. Seven large soaking wet man were crammed into my HHR. With two sleeping on top of all our sh tea in the trunk. Additionally. The second car was also completely full. With our local friends sleeping in the bed of the truck. Without us knowing. Cut to my friend waking up for a morning piss. Seeing the open tailgate. And our now locked in friends waking up the camp to be set free. I love Indy but FCK me sometimes it isn't very accommodating. When I was 14. My whole extended family was on vacation. And there was one night where all the adults went drinking. Since I was old enough to stay up with them but not drink. I went to bed when everybody else left. Because I'm the youngest of three. I got the pull out cot in our hotel room. While my parents and two older sisters shared the other two queen beds in the room. My drunk uncle crashed our room that night and shared the cot with me. To make things worse. I was under the sheets and he was sleeping on top of the sheets on his side of the cot. Meaning I couldn't pull them off of myself to get out. So I spent the night cramped in between my drunk uncle. The edge of my parents bed and trapped under bed sheets and couldn't escape. A good story though. My friend's house for a sleepover. They drew like 5 dicks in my face and my mom seen all of them when she picked me up in the morning. Psychiatric ER. Went for a panic attack that wouldn't quit. It was 20 degrees out and our city has a policy that homeless people can either go to jail or the ER if they refuse to check in at the shelter. On top of that. Our state prison was banned from operating their psych ward to so those prisoners were sent there as well. After being strip searched in front of 6 male guards. I was put back in the waiting area. Until one of the other patients lunged at me and threatened me. Since they were at capacity. The only place that was safe for me to stay until a doctor could see me was in an isolation room. Freezing cold. Hard rubber floors that reeked of bleach and body fluids. No shoes or jacket. And a door I could not open. I've never felt so utterly alone. Bed of my truck on a hunting trip where I was absolutely demolished by mosquitoes. 